G'day, fellas. Welcome to not your standard casted game that's going to be happening today. We've got a 4v4 on the Caribbean, starting with a... no. It's a Nomad start. Now, I normally wouldn't be showing you guys this game, especially because the very first player just got eliminated from the game at the 17th second. Uh, but there's a particular reason why I want to show you this game, and it's because of a single card that the Incans get. So this is a four versus four. This is a Nomad game. So for anybody unfamiliar with Nomad, you're able to actually choose where you want to put your town center down. Now, I'm playing as Dog Soldier 72. Uh, this game was a Smurf only game. You can only come to the game if you were Smurfing. Uh, so I, I decided to jump on Dog Soldier 72, do a little bit of Smurfing. And uh, and in this game, I, I'm going to be playing the Inca. And the card that I want to be talking about is, I'm not sure if, uh, if we're going to be able to see it just yet. We'll, we'll have to wait till I pick a deck. It gives fishing boats an attack. Now, I have a suspicion that this card is actually sleeper overpowered. And we're going to talk a little bit exactly why that is. Um, I'm going to speed up the game for you guys. I'm going to show you exactly what happens. But essentially on Caribbean, the idea is that you want to sort of just have a normal start. And then eventually, after maybe like, you know, three or four minutes move into water and it's all about water aggression that's what it's all about so i'm just playing inca here i'm doing a, a standard water start game is running a, a little bit slow so apologies if you guys are seeing fps lag here but essentially the idea is that uh that we we want to be moving into a um a build order that is very very aggressive so you can see this this deck is called 711 and that's because it's open 24 hours and the card that I want to be talking about is this card, Armed Fisherman. Fisher boat, uh, fisher bo ah, fishing boats gain an attack and get a small boost to hit points and line of sight. So fishing boots, so they get 10% hit points. They also get a siege attack as well as a range attack action and a 33% increase of line of sight. So let's take a look and see exactly how it happens. So the Inca are somewhat infamous on water maps just for being incredibly difficult to deal with because of their chincharafts. Well, it turns out their villages are probably even stronger than that. And the reason why we can tell that is because of this game, we're actually up against another Inca player. We're up against Cole. And Cole is going to be uh, providing us a little bit of uh, a little bit of friction when it comes to water. Now, let's take a look and see exactly what's happened in the early game. Um, so we've got... Uh, it's a three versus four, but that's okay. You know, it's a, it's a Smurf game. So we've got Inca... Who's, uh, who's set up over here. They've got four cancer houses in, in age one, I think, that they've put down. So a fair bit of uh, fair bit of booming. We've also got the British, who are just doing a little bit of booming, booming taking uh, a native trading post nice and early. Uh, also, looks like they've sent their explorer over here on the caravel. And then we've got one interesting player, Mr. Mongol Scourge, who is uh, who's just doing his own thing. It looks like he's actually moved all the way over here, and he's just said, you know what? I'm going to call this island my home. You guys can have your own islands. I'm going to go there. And then we've got down to the south, we've got the Russian player. He, he's just chose to to live amongst the uh, live amongst the sand. And then we've also got... Uh, who else have we got? We've got uh, <laughs> Semyon Valamov 40 from the Islander clan. Uh, and he is uh, he's going to be playing the United States. And then, of course, we've got the Portuguese player. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a Caribbean game without a Portuguese player. Uh, so, going to be doing a little bit of water booming. So, now reaching the uh, the second age. Let's take a look and see exactly how it unfolds. So, a little bit of a water boom happening. Um, and so, in this game, I actually decided to go up with the uh, the three priestesses. Turns out, priestesses aren't actually that good. Um, so, I, I thought that I'd be able to, you know, do a little bit of uh, priestess booming. The same way that you do warrior priest booming. It, ju it just doesn't work. They, they are so slow to produce 138 seconds. It's a long time. It's a long time. I don't actually know how, how slow that is in relation to Warrior Priest, but it felt very, very slow. Uh, and so let's let's take a look. So I, I think at some point I decide, you know what? We're not even going to bother uh, doing that anymore. We're just going to really focus on on, on fishing boats and, and doing the fertility dance as much as we can and really just getting as, as many fishing boats out as possible. So we'll turn off line of sight and, and just see exactly what I see. So continuing now... To, to make those priestesses. I think after the fourth one, I, I just sort of give up. Uh, now I'm going to be sending in that armed fisherman upgrade. So my thinking here was that it, with the armed fisherman, if my opponent also gets fishing boats out, and you, typically on Caribbean, that does happen where both, uh, you know, both teams will be doing fishing. Like you've got fishes, fish over here uh, and, and fishing here. 
th there'll be like a little bit of a fight over the resources on the sea and you might not want to invest in your military that early so you can just use your fishing boats to shoot now they don't do a lot of damage they only do eight damage uh but they actually cause your opponent to no longer be on that resource and, and walk away and if you've got enough fishing boats you can actually do quite a bit of damage as well and that's something that we will continue to see throughout this game so let's speed it up we're at the nine minute mark now you'll see a little bit of drop in fps here um and now beginning to train fishing boats out of one two three four docks so a, a, a lovely line of fishing boats at this point getting the the wood upgrade from the market so really going into overdrive here 43 villages so not too bad also got the priestesses out as well looks like we're going for our fifth priestess here now keep in mind we've got schooners so we've sent that in from the home city We've also sent in the fish market upgrade, so going to be able to to collect a quite a decent stipend when it comes to uh, all of all of the resources that we've got. And now the fishing boat army begins. So at this point, we've got 28 fishing boats. So that that ain't nothing for some Caribbean action. I'll say that much. Let's see. So we've got. I'm waiting for that priestess to come out. All right, here we go. Here's the action. So. The, uh, the chincha rafts begin to focus down the fishing boats and the fishing boats turn around. They say, you know what? Let's do it. You t take a look. It's like, it's pretty decent damage that comes out here. And you got to keep in mind, these fishing boats are only like, what, 50 wood each? And so that's like four fishing boats. That's 200 wood. And so they start repelling this. And I'm like, you know what, man? You want to you wanna come to the party? Like, we we're going to deal with you adequately right now. Like, we we're going to deal with you in the appropriate way. And the appropriate way is with a lot of fishing boats. Now, keep in mind, I'm actually, uh, I, I'm training chincha rafts because at this point, I'm, I'm still not aware of the true potential of the armed fishermen. Uh, but that, that does change. That does change. Uh, we're now sending in one of my favorite cards in the game, chinchillas. Uh, so chinchilla rafts, <laughs> chincha rafts and fishing boats move fast like chinchillas and they take less time to train. So yes, you heard that right. The, the fishing boats take less time to train. Uh, as well as the uh, the chincharafs. So the max chincharafs that you can have in H2 is eight chincharafs. Have a look how fast these fishing boats train. So I'm like, you know what? You want the army? Let's give them the army. And so the army begins. So we've now got, it's like 12 fishing boats right there in, uh, in the space of what? Like six seconds. And now we send in water ceremony as well. Uh, so this is this is what living is all about do a whole bunch of market trading and we just go all right let, let's go full fishing boats let's see exactly what happens and uh and we just decide to do a a little bit of a migration i would say maybe even a great migration we're up to 93 villages at the 12 minute mark so not too bad water ceremony is going to be affecting our fishing boats as well they're up to 290 attack uh or 290 health 11 attack at this point chincharafs now trying to focus down the fishing boats and have a look at this beautiful uh, th this beautiful fleet, they're going to be turning on these these chincharafs. And when they do, they're going to be sorry that they even came to the party. You see just how fast they're dealing with that chincharaf right there. So 290. So I'm not sure whether we've got uh, or whether when we move over exactly. But uh, the, the force that is to be reckoned with is right now. And you can just see absolutely how, how big it is. You know, it, how menacing it is. There's just so many fishing boats coming in right now. Our opponent's got, you know, just your standard Inca fishing boats. Whereas we've got 475 hit point fishing boats with 50% range resist and 14 ranged attack. Like, bring it on. Like, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. And you can just see how many fishing boats that there are. It, it gets ridiculous to the point where, you know, what is it that your opponent can do when you literally have... How, how many fishing boats are there? There are 61 fishing boats out on the water. Now, obviously, this is a different situation just simply because... It's Caribbean and, you know, not all maps are going to be the same. But I wouldn't be surprised after I post this video if we start to see armed fishermen start to get into the meta a little bit more because I tell you what, these guys are absolutely menacing. There's a couple of interesting interactions for fishing boats as well. As an example, when they are up against towers, they don't get shot at in the same way that caravels get shot or frigates get shot. And because of that, you can really utilize, you know, the water dance the same way that I'm using here to just be able to, you know, overwhelm completely your opponent. You can just see, you know, th this is like an, a perpetual charge. It doesn't end until the opponent's boats are, are dying. Stop kiting with your Navy boys. Come get some sugar. Exactly, Gondor Master Knight. Exactly. Come get some sugar, boys. Like, bring it on. Like, the fishing boats are just slowly pushing up. We've got just a just a casual army of fishing boats. A little bit of a fleet, I'd say, of uh, reinforcing fishing boats at this point. 
And, uh... And that's essentially the game. I mean, I, I don't want to sort of like talk too much else about how the game goes because it's not really about the game. It's more about the fishing boats and just how impressive they are uh, with their 475 hit points and their 14 attack. But uh, definitely uh, some beasts to be reckoned with. We're going to speed up the game. I'll show you exactly how it ends. It's, it gets a little bit laggy here, so apologies. And you can just watch the fishing boats just beginning to uh, beginning to focus down their opponents. Uh, it, it doesn't actually end. We, we literally chase him all the way around the world. Um, and now you can see that the, the Chincharafs are going to be in a little bit of a difficult spot here. The uh, the fishing boats are doing their best to focus them down. They've, I think they've gotten stuck right there. It looked like they might be stuck. But uh, we, we got a bit, we got a few reinforcements, to say the least. We've got a few reinforcements coming up here. And uh, yeah, it, sh it should be okay. Uh, so the fishing boats don't attack automatically. You've actually got to command them. So I don't even think you can attack move them with the chincharafs. You've got to like, you've got to tell them. You've got to just select all of them and then say attack move over here. Uh, and so more, more fishing boats. So first chincharaf just gets obliterated. Let's watch what happens to the second one. Second one about to get obliterated. There it goes. So the fishing boat's just doing absolute work. And eventually we chase him all the way around over to the end all the way over here and clear out the entire pond but uh this this is the story that i wanted to talk about so i hope that you've enjoyed this little bit of insight into a potential strategy that could be taking over the ladder anytime in the future thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one